how to search robotics jobs in the US as an international student. Hey everyone, my name is Kajal and welcome to my channel. For today's video, Rugvid and I talk about his experience of studying robotics at University of Buffalo. We also go into how he went about job searching, some mistakes he made and some really good advice for the all of you. I'll include some of the timings here and in the description below. So without further ado, let's get into it. Now let's start talking about your masters. So you went to University of Buffalo for your masters. Can you tell us a little bit about this masters and how it works? Yes. So University at Buffalo has a master's program in robotics. And this program is sponsored by mechanical and computer science department. It's not like your usual master's degree where it is coming from one of the departments and then you can choose electives from either one of them. But this program gives uh, an advantage to students to choose electives from different departments. And then there is no restrictions on how many electives you can choose. And also the master's programs there is usually three semesters long. Uh, and there are 30 credits and 10 subjects that you have to do to be eligible for graduation. They have six core courses that are highly recommended and which gives you introduction in machine learning, computer vision, and robotics. And they are really helpful because you get this introduction and then you can choose which path you, have, you want to pursue your career in. This is one major benefit that University of Buffalo's uh, master's master program has. Nice. I know you touched upon some of the courses, like there are six core courses. Are there any other courses that you took that you really liked or any professor that you worked with? And can you tell us something about that? Yes. So in my master's, I took this six required courses. And apart from that, I took a course called heuristic optimization. So this heuristic optimization are basically nature inspired algorithms. And why I found them, found them interesting is this optimization is widely used in machine learning or in robotics if you want to have an extended approach towards these algorithms. So this nature inspired algorithms gave me an understanding of how we can bring this optimization frameworks into the robotics world. One of my projects was actually taking the particle swarm optimization, which is a nature inspired optimization algorithm and bringing it into the robotics ROS world. And then framing it as a robotics problem gave me a uh, really good understanding of the path planning or you know, sense of fusion that was, that was required. And my professor, Dr. Soma Chaudhary, whom I worked with and who exposed me to all this different nature inspired algorithms, as well as all, all the other robotics applications was really, really helpful in, in finding jobs or in growing as a robotics engineer. I am very thankful for uh, his, his support throughout, throughout the master's. Nice. That does sound like a fun project. And I'm very glad that you shared this with our audience. I want to switch gears again and now talk about the job search part, especially when you were studying your master's. How did you go about it? And I also want to know about your first career fair experience. <laughs> yes. Here in United States, there is a career fair concept where you go to a company, you talk with them, you do a short talk, you, you introduce yourself, you build up the conversation in such a way that leads to any of the job offers or any of the job openings that company might have. I, I was aware of this, but I was not practiced enough or I didn't know how to approach a company, what to talk. So I remember one day before the career fair, I was having a doubt, should I go into this career fair? Because... I don't really know what to talk about and how do I approach uh, HR or, or, the, or the person that is in the career fair for representing a company. I started watching some videos. I still having the doubt, should I go into it or not? But then I figured out to know something, you have to be a part of it. You have to you know, take a first step and then see how, how it goes. So I, I prepared my mind. I, I didn't have any of the work done, which is basically uh, having a good resume or having uh, like my clothes prepared i was I, I was not mentally prepared so i woke up in the morning early morning i started writing i started editing my resume looking at the companies that are coming in the career fair look at looked at the profile edited my resume made a resume and in the morning i figured out this should be done at least two days in advance if you want to you know avoid the hassle 
of going into the career fair because you have to be presentable you have to be well prepared you have to have your questions ready for the company so that you can you know build up the conversation with them uh, in india we don't have career fairs like this but when you come here you get exposed to this career fair which is really good uh, good practice because then you can show your interest in uh, in the company and then get to know about what type of products or what type of engineering do this this company is doing so it was kind of experience uh, that you no know, i wasn't ready for but then i just stepped into it and tried my hands at con- uh, like small talks and conversation with with these companies yeah that's so true even i remember my first a career fair experience because as you said you know this is not a common concept in india so the very first thing is what are you even supposed to do how are you even supposed to talk to recruiters <laughs> because you've never done that before yes and and the concept of small talks is actually new was new to me because in india we don't have this you no know, small talks kind of concept we just if we have a question is directly go to a person ask the question and come back so this was new to me and then what i was scared about was if i go if i approach a, a person and then i don't i don't want to make it an awkward situation where i don't have any questions to ask for and then they're just looking at me you know i'm just standing there uh, awkwardly so I, i wanted to avoid this situation but to avoid this if anyone has this question there are certain questions that you can prepare and then ask them these questions and then build up the conversation on top of that show you show your interest i think you gave very good advice that you know go prepared in terms of look at the companies that you want to visit at the career fair ensure you have some questions prepared for them ensure you have your own resume prepared so you know you can go and submit this final finished resume and do it a couple of days in advance because otherwise on the day of the career fair you're going to be very stressed yes uh, and if you if you do it in advance you have this peace of mind where you know you you know you are prepared you just have to walk in there and come out with your your offer or you know whatever good experience or good good connection or networking you you're going to do there those are some really great tips for career fair now the one other question i want to ask you is how to learn job description i know you mentioned this in our previous conversation can you tell us about your learnings yes so there is one really uh, fun experience i had uh, when i was searching for a job so reading a job description is really really important so in job description there are you know different sections called summary then there is a section called general requirements and there is a skills there is a required skills and then there is a preferred skills when i was looking at this company's job description description when i was going to apply i looked at the skills sections and usually companies have common skills mentioned in in this this section where i looked at that and it it mentioned software hardware networking and all these things now with my experience i figured out the software part of this is really aligns with my interest so i want to apply to this company and then i went ahead i applied i got a uh, interview call and when i was having team interview call this included the software hardware and networking interview now i was prepared only for the uh, software part now what i missed here is even though that company has mentioned hardware and uh, networking and all the electronics part of it as well i only looked at the the part that interests me and then prepared for that so i want to take this moment and share this because this is really important for you as well as the company that you go through the job description completely you see you no know, because every word in job description is important and they are looking for those certain number of skills and now even if skill sections look, looks pretty general i would also read the summary because in the summary there is a company description uh, and the describe the role that you will be working on if you relate those two things that the company role as well as the skills you can get a pretty good understanding of what the company is looking for and once you have that understanding of what's the role about and what kind of skills they are going to require the interview process is much much smoother and th- this is art and if you keep reading about this job descriptions a lot then you will understand what type of work is being done there you know for when you are preparing for your interviews you can add those all things together and look at all the aspects that are there in the job descriptions which would help you in the in the interview interviews 
Yeah, very well said. It's this art of reading job description and applying. It also matters when you are applying for hundreds of jobs. Instead of applying blindly, if you look at, okay, this is the best things that align with me and also tweaking your resume a little bit to match those things. Not only there's a higher chance that you will get a call back, but also that your entire interview will go very smoothly. That, that, is, that is really true. This job description or reading about the company, doing the research, I can't stress enough, but it is really important throughout the your interview process. Yeah, I totally agree. And also one thing I would like to add is if you're in this, the start of your master's and you know in the next one and a half to two years, you're going to be studying and eventually want a full-time job. At the start, look at all the job descriptions and kind of figure out what are the skills that are important in general for the kinds of roles that you're looking for. So then in the next one and a half to two years, you can kind of focus on building those specific skills instead of just going all over the place. I also want to add one more point there. Sure, go like ahead. If someone is coming to pursue their master's here, or because in in US, the LinkedIn is uh, very important and very helpful when finding job. And most of the companies maintain their LinkedIn profile, have those job openings or on a job section or career section on their LinkedIn profile. What one thing that I did when I started my master's, go at different companies, keep on look, look out for different companies that are you know, working in your field. There is a saying called Rome wasn't built in one day. So if you suddenly start looking for jobs and then you don't have that database created on LinkedIn, which, you know, where you don't have these many companies listed uh, in, in your, you know, where you're not following them, you are not going to get the job openings that are there, that they are broadcasting. If you don't know about the job openings, you can't basically apply to them. Yeah, that's very well said, especially coming from countries like India, where you had a placement cell, where they were bringing companies to you versus now you are on the lookout for companies. So don't try to look for the companies at the end stage, but right from the start. So you have this database, as you mentioned. Speaking of jobs and skills, I do have another question from the audience. What is that one skill which requires a lot to be a roboticist? First thing I would mention is interest because robotics is not like any of other engineering branches. It's a combination of multiple branches. Interest is the foremost important, I, I would say. If you are interested if, in the engineering and all aspects of engineering thing, how is the controller working here? How is the mechanical design working here? What's the mechanism that they're using? And what's the algorithm or, or the coding part of it? Or how, how is the whole system performing it together? This actually depends on what specialization in robotics that you're working on. So let's say if you're working on a mechanical part of a robot, then definitely SOLIDWORKS or all the design software, if you're working on that, then that becomes the important priority. Or all the other parts, which is like controls, path planning, SLAM, computer vision, all these things. The most important thing is coding. So that is that is one, I think, important skill to have as, as, as a roboticist. I would agree with you. So I do have another question in the same area that I want to ask you. How does one go about selecting the specialization within robotics, given all these subfield? And according to you, is there one that's kind of more in demand or one that is saturated? And what are your opinions on this? So as I, as I mentioned earlier, I would first stress on interest. If you are new in the robotics, if you are just joining the master's program, I would take at least a semester to do or at least two semesters to do different courses, look out at the, look at the different branches, you know, different subfields that robotics has. Take those subjects, try these projects, and then figure out what you are good at, what are your interests, how does your background aligns with that. And once you find your interest, then it becomes really easy to do a research on a particular subfield, what type of projects are going on, read papers and all these things. But first thing would be to try all the things and then decide that that would be my two cents. Yeah, I would agree with that. You know, it's kind of explore and exploit. In the start, kind of explore and either do a project or study a little bit within that area to really find out if that is something you like. And then once you found it, just like go all in and exploit it. Sure, exactly. So once you find your interest, then it becomes easier for you to you know, research about that, do the projects that are related to that, and then look at the company profiles, what type of jobs are offered. Yeah, that's some really solid advice. And any last word of advice for anyone who's pursuing robotics? 
try to do as many projects as possible outside your coursework try and go talking with professors if there is a maker space kind of thing in your university try engaging with them try doing different projects outside your just the course uh, in robotics so that it helps you in the uh, in 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 job process or whatever career you want to uh, go into yeah i would agree you know time and again everyone who comes on this channel to interview says the same thing yeah. do projects do projects do projects, projects. cuz you get experience and you also get to figure out what it is that you like yes Pro- project i i mean i can't stress enough but projects are the ones who give you you know real world understanding of all those mathematical concepts that you are studying in the book you can do some coding here you know you, you can implement something and then you can see your robot moving or performing those actions which is really fun to look which is really interesting thing to do i i really feel uh, excited when my code is on the on on the real real hardware and it is doing what it is supposed to do because most of the times you implement something and then it does something else and then it becomes a process of debugging and figuring out what went what went wrong and then finally if it does the same thing that you expected then that that's the bliss i think yeah that is so true um okay thank you so much for coming on the channel and if you all enjoyed this video make sure to give it a like and if you haven't already don't forget to subscribe